Hi, welcome to McGowan Soundworks. My name is Phil McGowan. I'm a mixing and recording engineer in Los Angeles working on film, television, and video game music. Today I'm going to be showing you how I mixed the choir for the main theme from Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War by composer Jack Wall. Now this is kind of a unique uh, situation because the choir was completely recorded at home. Each individual singer recorded themselves and then sent the recordings into Jack Wall's team for us to mix. Normally I would have everyone join me at a studio and we'd put everyone in a room together. I'd put room mics up and put some spot mics on the different sections of the choir and record them as an ensemble. But because of the pandemic, that just wasn't possible, especially here in Los Angeles where the cases have not been great. Um, so in typical COVID fashion, pandemic fashion, I'm in my comfortable clothes that I usually actually end up mixing in while I'm working from home. So hopefully you feel right at home with me here in my studio in my uh, <laughs> comfy situation. Anyway, let's take a look. So here's the choir section from the session for this mix. Uh, it was called Title Screen, it was the sort of working title because this was the music that uh, plays during the, the opening menu title screen in the game. Um, so we have 16 singers, but they each double tracked themselves. So you can see that there's a one and two for each singer here. Uh, the first one was recorded on access, kind of like I'm on the mic right now. And then the second pass, they turned their head away and recorded a sort of off axis recording so that it had a slightly different characteristic for the double track. So that essentially gave me 32 singers to work with, 16 tenors and um, 16 basses, but just with eight of each section. Um, yeah, like I said, they were all sent into Jack Wall's team and they did all of the editing, though it looks like, as you can see, there's really not much. Um, most of these edits here are just me doing some clip gain and things like that um, between the different sections. They kind of leveled out all the singers, but you can see their recording levels were, were pretty good, pretty consistent um, between all the sections. So when you look at my faders here, I really didn't do a lot of uh, level adjustments between the singers. I just boosted a couple people, it looks like, because they all just blended together. These are very professional, excellent uh, singers, session choir singers here in Los Angeles. So they did a really great job. Um, so if you haven't heard this piece before, I'll just play the beginning of it where the choir comes in so you can kind of get an idea of what the piece sounds like. So take a listen. Okay, so you get the idea. At the beginning, there's some short choir. They're just uh, speaking lyrics that Jack's wonderful wife, Cindy Shapiro, actually wrote Russian lyrics that do mean something. I'm not actually sure what they mean. Uh, I think there's a translation somewhere of that. Um, but they are speaking lyrics uh, throughout the whole piece in Russian because it sort of obviously takes place during the Cold War. Um, so they do some short stuff at the beginning. In the middle, they do some long uh, legato singing, back to the shorts for a bit. And then at the very end, they're singing full out legato notes uh, towards the end of the, the piece. Um, so if I just look at the choir tracks here, let me turn off all of my processing and mute any reverbs that I used. Um, you can see, like I said before, everything is pretty much all the same level because the recordings and the clip gain that were done ahead of time just turned out that everyone blended together pretty, pretty nicely. Um, for panning, I just took the double tracks and just reverse panned them. So you see the first uh, bass, uh, sorry, first tenor singer here is hard left and right. The next tenor singer is 85, 85, 70, 70. And the basses, I actually kind of integrated them. So the tenor is 100, 100. The, the, the first bass is 95, 95, 85, 85, 80, 80. And I kind of just blended everyone as this sort of homogenous male choir since we only had tenor basses. Normally, if it was SATB, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, I'd, I'd pan them left to right like they normally would stand in a, a concert situation. But since this is sort of a hybrid, unique piece, um, that's what I chose to do here. So let me just solo the choir for you here. And you can hear um, how bone dry they sound, which is typical of someone that recorded at home. Yes. S, S, F, V, Z, K, N, K, N, V, S, S. So obviously that 
sounds tonally pretty good. Um, their recordings were great. It seems it sounds like every one of these singers has some sort of a de- decent microphone and a nice dry, dead room to record in, which is a great start. But it obviously doesn't sound like it was a choir in a hall or in a big studio, which is normally what we would want it to sound like for a piece like this. Um, so that's kind of our final goal is to get this to sort of sound as if it was recorded in a hall and wasn't recorded, you know, in, I mean, some, some of these guys might've been in their bedroom. I have no idea where they actually recorded, but the results were great. that came to me. Um, so first I just, uh, on everybody here might not have been the first thing I did, but I put a DSer on every individual track. This is actually, I'd say one of the few advantages of recording this way is that I really can process each person, uh, individually and especially in a big piece like this the s's sometimes can be an issue um, and with choir recorded in a hall or in a big studio it sometimes can be hard to ds them dsing room mics sometimes doesn't always work that great so i'd say the one advantage here was that i was able to do the dsing i needed though it, it wasn't too terrible um, in these recordings so all of these were um, mixed down to a stereo sub here i have this choir subgroup uh, that i sent all the singers to right here in my uh, choir section of buses here. Um, and now this uh, mix for this piece was 4.1. So it's basically a 5.1 mix without the center channel, which is what I usually do for video game cutscenes or big themes like this. Um, because of the way that they put the music into the game engine, it's just a little bit hard to sync up a center channel because everything's in mono and stereo elements. So they basically have to take the front channels, the back channels and the LFE and play them all back together. Um, so now if those were not playing <laughs> in sync with each other, it wouldn't sound great, but it wouldn't be as horrendous as if the center channel was out of sync with the left and right. But anyway, uh, you'll notice that the choir here is just quad because, um, you know, you never really use a sub on choir, um, and there's no center channel because of the format. So yeah, so I mix this all down. This is actually a stereo bus. Um, and I'll show you with this altiverb how that stereo bus has been turned into quad. But the first thing I did here was just did some EQ, this AMEC EQ from Plugin Alliance. Um, this is actually the first time I used it. I had the Plugin Alliance set and uh, I just needed a nice bus EQ that could do a little bit of uh, mid-range shaping and add some warmth and this one worked well. So it looks like I took out a little bit of 1.4, uh, sorry, 1.8, um, all with wide bandwidth. Just, you know, taking out a little mid, little low mids. Yeah, oh, here we go. Just below 1K, just to love 1.8, just to take a little bit of the mid-range harshness. I find choirs kind of build up in uh, the mids uh, quite a bit, so you don't want those to get too heavy. And since this is all men, I added a little bit of low end. So S, listen to that. S, S, you can see my individual DSers are uh, are triggering right here on some of these singers. So not a huge change. It just sounds a little smoother. It's going to blend a little bit better with all the other elements in this piece. Okay, then after that, I um, I had this Pro-Q on here. You might notice, if you've watched my videos, I use a lot of Pro-Q. I do love this plugin. Um, in this case, I just used it to, to roll off some low end. There's really not much low end going on. Uh, didn't technically need this, but... You know, I high pass a lot of stuff just in case, because especially this comes from mixing for cinema. Um, sometimes you mix something in a small room and you might not notice how much the low end builds up. Then you go uh, to a dub stage or a movie theater and here you mix. And if you're in the right part of the room where the low end can build up, all this rumble just, you know, can sort of blow you away and be really annoying. So I'm always very, very conscious when I'm mixing scores um, to, you know, watch out for the for the low end. Um, and it does look like uh, this AMAC does have a little analog modeling in there that I did not shut off, but I don't see. Well, it's just this harmonic distortion. No, eh, well, there's some noise coming from somewhere, but it wasn't loud enough to bother me. Um, so whatever it's doing, actually, let's take a look. Let's see if that's what that is. Yeah, so it does have a little bit of analog modeled noise, is what it is. Anyhow, uh, so even though I'm DSing the choir all together, um, I think this is something I added after I got everyone together and was sort of doing the final mix of the choir within the entire track, and it was still just a little bit sibilant. So I did a little bit of DSing on the entire bus here, S, S, and that's actually S, you know getting a decent N, amount of DSing there. So with those turned off. Just smoothed it out a little bit. The S's weren't that bad. I probably could have gotten away without DSing. 
but it added something nice. Um, now this last uh, plugin here, this Altiverb, this is really um, where I did something unique because of the way that this was recorded. Normally I would have close mics similar to this, probably not quite this close. Usually when I put spot mics on a choir, I won't put them right up to their mouth as if we were recording a solo vocal or background vocals for a pop record. Um, but I will have close mics um, and then I'll have room mics. And I usually start with the room mics like I would with an orchestra and then blend in the spot mics as needed to get some definition on them because we want this to sound like an ensemble. Um, but I obviously don't have room mics to this because of the way it was recorded. Um, so this was my attempt at trying to mimic everyone sounding like they were in a room together. And this really made a huge difference. Um, so this is a stereo in quad out um, altiverb convolution of Tadeo, which was a great scoring stage in LA that sadly no longer exists. Um, and I put the mix here, let's see, 40% wet. So this makes a really big difference and this kind of gets the choir to sound like they're all in a room together. Let's take a listen to that. S, 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 F, B, Z, K. Bypass it? Turn it back on. You know, so not super long, not super wet. It's just a room. It is a big, long room. But it just pushes everyone back a little bit. They're not super close to you now. It sounds like you're standing in front of a choir instead of having, you know, 16 <laughs> male singers, like, all up in your face. Now it sounds like you're listening to them from a distance. There's still a bit of definition, which was nice. Jack really wanted this to have a bit of definition. I've mixed for Jack um, a lot before, and he usually likes his choirs to have a bit more definition. So I'm usually using a bit more spot mics, especially when they're speaking... Um, sort of short staccato lyrics like this. Um, so we still get that because of the way it was recorded, but just adding this room just really sort of pushes them back a little bit um, and makes it sound as close as I could get it to sound like they're recorded in a room together. Um, then after that, I'm sending um, to reverb. So I send my actual overt hall long sounding choir reverbs after all of my processing. So after the EQ and after this sort of room convolution um, room maker here that I kind of did. Now, my thinking on that is that normally I would do my sends from a multi-track of the room mics and the spot mics. Like if you look over here on the brass that was recorded for this, you can see all my reverb sends are on the room mics here and the spot mics all together and I link them and send them all together. Um, and then after whatever EQ I've done on the individual channels. So my thinking here was that I would send the reverb as if I did have those channels um, for the um, choir that was recorded all together. Um, so yeah, so I'm using the symphony and this altiverb. Um, let's take a, take a look at those. So these are my typical choir reverbs. Uh, if you've watched my Cobra Kai mixing video, you'll see that this is the exact same reverbs. I don't think I changed them all. This is always how I start usually when I'm mixing sort of a cinematic choir. Um, these are the two that I always use. I just sort of change the blend of them and sometimes might change the reverb tail. So let's turn on the symphony. S, 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 now that's reverb. Now you're noticing reverb, you know, like you normally would expect to hear on a, on a sort of cinematic concert choir like this. So not crazy long, but has some tail. Um, that I like to blend with this uranium Borg um, convolution, which is just a big, long uh, church. So let's hear that one by itself. S, 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 F, B, Z. So it's actually not that, um, doesn't sound that long, even though it's a nine second convolution, um, just at 100%. It doesn't decay super long. Um, though I do find if you feed a little bit more information, it does get a little bit longer. So it's kind of nice for dynamic pieces like this, that if you push into it a bit more with the send, uh, it does get a little bit longer sounding, which is kind of how uh, a cathedral might work. Uh, you, you know, if you talk very quietly in a cathedral, you're not going to get a lot of reflections because the walls are so far away. You're just only going to hear the direct sound. You're not going to hear a lot of decay until you have a really um, sort of loud event. So it, it behaves a little bit like that, but not exactly. But uh, these together sounds like this on the shorts. Yes. So you can hear the symphony is a little bit brighter, a little bit bristlier, and the uh, altiverb uranium board kind of has a darker um, sort of tone to it. So together, I just think they sound nice on choir. They blend well together. I could use one or the other and probably get away with it, but I've always liked this uh, combination. Um, and these uh, reverbs you can see here are, um, well, actually, this is quad in, quad out. 
a lot of times I'll do stereo in um, quad out or stereo in 5.0 out or stereo in 7.0 out, depending on what format I'm mixing in. Um, but because I'm sending this from a, a quad channel, these are quad in, quad out, I believe, right? Yes, quad in, quad out. Um, which sounds nice. You know, that's a, a great use of surrounds in score mixing is that you get a little reverb and a little sound back there. Now that's going to my quad choir stem here, choir bus, um, which has this EQ on here. I think this came in from a template that I imported from when I built this template. But, you know, it just took out a little mids with the reverb, uh, sort of the wet sound. Um, then I always have this uh, sort of safety um, high pass filter on all of my stems. Um, and then this is my template sort of bus EQ on choir. I think I turned off the high end here because it just, it didn't need it. A lot of times I might have this turned up, you know, a couple dB, one, two dB, just to add some high end to the choir like I would in an orchestra. Um, but I turned it off or, you know, turned it down for this one because of this choir was already pretty bright with the way it was recorded. Um, and then just, you know, took out a little bit 1.6. I think this also came in from a, a template I had um, and I just left it. You know, normally I think... I maybe would have bypassed these and just stuck with all the EQ that I was doing on the um, choir sub bus here. But uh, in this case, I, I think I remember that this was on there and I kind of forgot that it was part of my template. And I noticed it and I was like, well, it sounds fine. So I'll just leave it, even though technically it's sort of, um, you know, there's quite a few different EQs that it's going through. But you can notice they're all doing just little things. The AMAC here is negative one four. You know, this uh, 1.7K ish cut is the most extreme just because I find that that gets harsh and brittle sometimes. Um, so that one's negative three, but everything else is negative one and a half. This is plus one here. I didn't do actually any EQ here. This is just a filter. You know, this mid range one that came with my template, negative 170. Not a lot, just little subtle things. And each one of these different plugins kind of has a different character. The Pro Q is a little bit more surgical, and then the Neve and the AMAC kind of have, you know, an analog character. But yeah, that's that's how I put it together. Um, it really wasn't super complicated, but it was just sort of blending the right amounts of um, the room reverb that I added here just to sort of make them sound like they're all in a room together. Uh, and then these long reverbs that I normally would put on any choir that was recorded. Now, I will note that you can see here the send on the sub. I did automate the send to the reverbs. Sometimes I'll have a long and short reverb for elements like this. Like if I have short strings and long strings, um, I'll have a short reverb and a long reverb that I'll alternate back and forth between. But for this, uh, I didn't think it was necessary. Um, I just turned down the level a bit when they were singing short because if, if it gets too wet, it just gets kind of mushy and you lose the definition of the lyrics that they're speaking of the text. And then when they sing long here, which I'll play in a second, um, boost the reverb a bit because anything legato sounds nice with a little bit more reverb. So you can see I just sort of went up and down. Um, where they were singing short and uh, where they were singing long. So I played the beginning. Uh, let's take a listen to this uh, long section in the middle. <laughs> Kind of sounds like an, uh, an ensemble together, and then this puts them in a big space. That's the drama. And here's the phonics. Let's go back to the beginning of the section. See how weird that sounds? See how kind of natural it sounds to have this ultra dry, bone dry choir against you know strings and brass and things that were recorded in these pads that were in rooms and have reverbs on them. So this altiverb, I'll turn, I'll, I'll play it back dry and then I'll turn on the altiverb just to put them in the room to start, and then I'll turn on the other reverb so you can hear how those really help blend the choir in. It's a little better now. Sounds like it's part of the, the mix, but still a little dry. Let's add these. Yeah, 
Yeah, and that's how I did that. Let's uh, take a listen to the end here where they go short and then the sort of final um, big climax of the piece. One more thing to note, I did automate the choir um, altogether. You know, I did my typical, if you've seen any of my other videos, I usually have my live orchestra multi-track VCAs at the top of the session, so I can scroll my controller here, and then I have my faders right in front of me. Uh, for choir, um, this is the actual volume curve, so I did sort of automate it all the way through, pulled them back here, brought them up and down in places, um, and then this volume trim is all, I believe, addressing notes from Jack. So there there were specific places where he wanted a little more choir, a little less, a little more, a little less, a little more, a little less. Turn up this word, turn up this syllable, things like that. So you can see I left my hand-drawn automation, or it's not hand-drawn, my fader-drawn automation because I liked the general shape of that. And then just edited it using uh, trim automation here. So the trim automation will gain my curve up and down. Um, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's how I mix the home recorded at home choir for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, the main theme. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content. Thanks. Bye-bye.